We're back with another analysis recap style video for ReZero Season 2, Episode 2. And we start off with saying farewell to Crucier. And this is a very important scene, apparently, in the source material where there's a lot of development between Amelia and Crush. It's like Crush and Amelia have such a heartfelt farewell. Because right now it just says Amelia Sama, I wish you good health. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. And they have a handshake. But what actually happened, right? And you said so. It was all about like a discussion of how Emilia wanted to let Crucian know that she's a half-elf and whether or not she'd be okay with that because of the prejudices. A very interesting thing is, Crush has forgotten her memories. So does that mean she would have she would have also forgotten the prejudice that exists with the half-elves of this kingdom? Like, think about it. Gluttony ate her memories away. Yet, Amelia feels a need to clear up, you know, the prejudice of the half-elf shit. Someone that's forgotten everything should not even be aware that such prejudice exists, but clearly if, you know, if she does know, then stuff like that aren't forgotten, but I guess the memories related, like, to herself are forgotten. After the handshake, there is a part here where I misunderstood during the actual reaction. Because, see? Subaru blushes when Krush reaches her hand out, and I thought that this is some sort of funny rom-com moment where Subaru realizes that shaking Krush's hand, holding her hand like that would be too intimate, almost like an act of cheating and being unfaithful to Amelia who's right beside. Therefore, he slapped her hand. But that's not what happened. What actually went on is a deeper conversation about Subaru's claims of trying to protect everybody but not feeling adequate enough and feeling kind of shameful Therefore, he didn't think that he deserved this and kind of like slapped that hand. Now we're off and in this place, we talk, we, the Natsuki Subaru, the um, groomer uh, continues, right? Because he sits right beside Amelia. Amelia says she's fucking weirded out by it, right? It made me a little uncomfortable at first, but now it feels strange if you don't, so it's fine. Grooming. There's, there, of course, we're memeing right now. We're memeing, but I've seen... Him do this shit in episode 25, season 1 and 2 when he says, Slowly but surely you're gonna fall in, you know, in love with me. I'm gonna be very mindful of the Natsuki Groomer Subaru uh, meme theory as season 2 progresses to see how their relationship advances. But things are looking pretty good between Subaru and Amelia. Can't really say much for Rem though. I really enjoy how Subaru actually cares about Rem. Because he could have just fucked off with Amelia and just left Rem alone, right? But the fact that... He actually does care about Rem, goes to show how much he appreciates her support back in Season 1. And, again, you know how people said that Subaru doesn't deserve Rem because of the unconditional love that she presents while Subaru is being an absolute idiot in Arc 3? I feel like Arc 2 still, again, justifies why Rem fell in love with Subaru and that's why she shows unconditional love. But, imagine this, right? It's like karma hitting us. This girl, all she's done is be good to Subaru when he didn't quote-unquote deserve it in Arc 3, but now... We're in a situation where Subaru must now take care of her, no matter what. So it's like atonement? Karma? There's something beautiful and poetic about this. It's sad, but at least he's taking care of her. Uh, what else happens after here? Some slice of life scene, some funny shit with Otto about wanting to talk to Roswell, right? And then we talk about like Amelia's selfishness, right? about how she feels selfish to participate in royal selection? I don't think so. I think that she's like advocating for equality for sure is a selfless act, but you know how often in season one, we talk about the concept of like selfless, like there's, there's a difference between acting selfless and being selfless. And sometimes you can be very selfish when trying to seem selfless. This is getting very confusing, but I don't think that she's really selfish, man. I don't. We get to the mansion. Not just yet. Petra is here. We talk about the sanctuary. We don't know much about the sanctuary other than, you know, that's where Roswell's at. And remember, Roswell is there in anticipation that Subaru and Amelia will show up to the sanctuary because Frederica gets that letter. We get to the mansion. This part's a little bit scary, but nah. I thought like cult members are going to start fucking attacking. The mansion's taking over. But boom! Frederica is here, and we see her jagged teeth, which means that she is a demi-human. Subaru apparently makes an offhand comment about the teeth, and Frederica's a bit upset about it. And yeah, that's why he's getting punished right now. Frederica Bauman. She warns, uh, she was employed here in the past. Apparently, she's like one of Roswell's oldest maids. Like 10 plus years of servitude. 
but Frederica disappeared because Roswell ordered them to. There was a lot of different maids before, but as we geared into the role selection, Roswell prepared in advance to keep security tight to make sure no one else is a liability by getting rid of those mates. That's the amount of preparation he's doing. And Frederica kind of, you know, that's the reason why she was gone. But now she's back. I don't know why. Well, I know why. Because Roswell sent her, right? She has the letter as well that Roswell gave that was apparently some sort of instructions to make sure that a million Subaru would head for the sanctuary. Uh, what else is there? She's lying about the uh, personal reason. Sorry. I returned that Ram's request and found the mansion empty. Well, maybe that is true, but maybe that's like uh, Roswell telling Ram. So even though it says Ram's request, that request was made from Roswell first and foremost. Fortunately, a letter I found in the master's office gave me an idea to what happened. I think part of it is this is like a lie, right? When I returned, the kitchen and garden were in a desolate state. This is all just a lie, right? Frederica is making excuses right now about why she returned to be a maid. But Roswell is the one that sent her, right? Am I crazy? Or is this just Frederica just capping right now? If only Cruz was here and we could use the blessing of the, the wind shit to see if the wind spirits were saying lies or not. Let's see. We get to see, have a, we, got, we got a little bit of like a funny Ram moment to disperse the suspicion of why, you know, Frederica could be here. That's actually a thing that happens a lot. Where sometimes, in order to hide up or cover up some really significant thing, the significant thing here is Frederica lying to cover up for Roswell. We have like Ram and like, you know, the funny moments of Ram fucking up the interiors and the outside because she's messy. So to immediately get you off guard and not think about whether or not what Frederica said was a suspicion. But looking back at it now with extra context, it seems like a lie. Uh, this is all about Rem. Let's go on to Rem. I'm more interested in the Biko shit. Here we go. This part is fucking fascinating. So, we show up to Biko and we tell Biko, right, that we killed Better Goose. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Those words carry deep meaning coming from a man who balled in the lap of the woman he loves. We're talking about the fucking lap pillow jokes. That's never gonna end. Let's get to the point. Yes. So, how well do you know what Razal's thinking? This is more cut content. I think that uh, in the Annie News video, we talked about how Roswell did not... Like, Roswell, like, Roswell trusts Biko. Even though they banned her a lot, he does. He left her here without any uh, additional instructions because she, he's like cap he knows how capable Biko is. Someone told me that you know how Roswell thinks. Ah, it must have been the half-beast girl. Exactly, Frederica. There's a bit of accuracy, so tell me what she's thinking. But my connection with Roswell has nothing to do with the current circumstances. Sure. Roswell has nothing to do with that. Why Biko stayed? Yeah, I don't know. We still don't know exactly why Biko stays in the hidden library other than to just, like, guard the library. But what is she guarding against? What is the contract that Biko made with Roswell? I'm not really sure. Were you and I just else just giving him too much credit? Thinking he wouldn't go up against the witch's cult with no plan. So this part. So let's think about the Roswell shit. So now this is my leading theory. My theory about Roswell and why he acts so different. Different to what I assume his character being. What is his character? Preparation. Cautious. Cunning. Very smart. This is a guide, again, that removed all those maids in preparation for the royal selection because... Having supporting Amelia, a uh, half-elf, publicly is gonna create a target on his back. A guy like that would not just leave the fucking mansion and then come back at the very last moment and use Ul Goa to save Subaru. A guy like that would never just disappear in Arc 3 and let Subaru handle everything. So, okay. What is Roswell's goal? The goal is to make Amelia queen so he can slay the dragon. But he was happy when Subaru showed up at the kingdom and fucked everything up, right? So I'm like thinking, back, back then again, I, I thought like my theory was... Roswell sees Subaru as such a liability, that's why he allows Subaru to embarrass himself to this degree, to get rid of him. I thought that made sense for a bit. But now that we've finished Season 1 and we watch more Annie's videos, this is my leading theory. It's the exact opposite. Roswell does not see Subaru as a liability. Roswell sees Subaru as an extremely reliable tool. 
I believe that Roswell has a similar ability to the regression powers, where each timeline he's also resetting with Subaru. And instead of him doing everything himself, because he's, a, he's such a cautious and a meticulous person, he lets Subaru take the front lead, fuck up, learn from his mistakes over and over again. And when the time arises, he'll sometimes help out like at the end of arc two. Now, with that assumption, with Roswell having like a regression power, that explains how Roswell's future is also secured, even if those runs are failed, like the one where Beak was straight up said before sending Subaru and Amelia out through the portal, I'm different from Roswell, even if his future is secured, right? So I think that makes sense. I'm going to stick with that theory. Surely we're going to have some tweaks. It's going to change as we watch more episodes. But right now, I want to believe that. We talk about the gospel here. Why do you of all people have one of those? Right? I took it off the enemy after a bite. No point do we ever mention Sloth or Betrugus, right? It belonged to the guy in the charge of the witch cultist who surrounded the mansion. I don't think Biku even knows who surrounded the mansion at this point, at least based on just the anime scenes, right? And what became of him? Biku is already thinking in her mind that this is Betrugus. How would she know that? Does the gospel have some sort of aura that Biku can like track as it's it's like the sloth? Was there something characteristics about this gospel that belonged to Betrugus? Because we haven't told her anything, yet she knows already. Betrugus, then you've let me behind too, I suppose. She says Juice, which is the short name for Betrugus, and you've left me behind too, I suppose. Long friend. What do we know about Betrugus? He's an evil spirit that goes from one body to another, right? The possession shit. Looks like Biko and Betrugus were friends back in the past. We know that Biko is... Yeah, Biko is a great spirit. Uh, Juice is a spirit, sure. We know that both spirits. We know that Biko is also 400 years old. And the White Whale is also 400 years of terror. That's very interesting things. I wanna... Let's keep in mind of that too. So like, it sounds like Biko and the White Whale were created at the same time, roughly. Who created the White Whale? I thought it was gonna be the Witch of Gluttony or Archbishop of Gluttony because of the dialogue. Uh, sorry, because, I don't know, they called it Gluttony before. Puck said that. It used to be known as Gluttony, but now it's the White Whale. Well, now we know the Archbishop of Gluttony is 13 years old, but I'm sure the position of the Archbishop of Gluttony have changed throughout the last 400 years. It's not like these Archbishops are the first Archbishop of their positions, are they? I'm not sure. I assume that some may be, but some are just like, I don't know. It's like new employees, you know? They stick around for a while, then they die. I, I don't know. But there's a connection between the 400 years, and then the anime specifically said the White Whale was created by the Witch of Envy. Right? That's what I read in the subtitles of Season 1. But it could be misleading. I'm not sure if that's exactly the case, but that's what the anime stated. It could be a fact. It could also not be a fact. Then you've left me behind too, I suppose. Biku shows sorrow and sadness. Juice. None of your concern. So obviously, Biku knows that killing Betrugus is not a bad thing. Because he's an evil motherfucker, right? That's why she's not like, Oh my god, Subaru, I can't believe you did this. But at the same time, she shows sadness because it must have been a long lost friend that turned evil or something. Anyways, if you've killed Sloth, a thin archbishop, what happened to his witch factor? Immediately jumps onto the witch factor and Subaru says, Witch factor? What? I don't know what that is. You don't know what it is? You really don't? Witch factor? I don't. And then Biko says something very interesting. If that's the case, then why did you bother to kill Sloth? What does this imply? Simply by killing an Archbishop, Biko implies that the only reason you would do so is to take the Witch Factor. I don't know exactly what you would do with the Witch Factor, but what does it do? Well, can we assume that in order for a cult member to be promoted into an Archbishop position, you need to have a Gospel and a Witch Factor? Maybe. Am I being too tunnel vision right now and assuming that only, you know, uh, that am I am I assuming that every archbishop should have an arch, a witch factor, but maybe only Betrugus had a witch factor? I don't know, right? There's many different possibilities of combinations happening on right now, but other than that, we don't know. But clearly, if you kill one, like you clearly have a goal in mind to do with something with the witch factor. Other than that, we don't know. Does a witch give you these things, right? I mean, it's called a witch factor. There's an archbishop and a witch associated with each sin. 
the most recent episode, we met Satel, sorry, Echidna, who is the Witch of Greed. And now we know Regulus Corneas, who is the Archbishop of Greed. What is the relationship between those two? Did Echidna give a Witch Factor to Regulus and then ascend him to Archbishop position? I don't know. The show hasn't told us enough, but Witch and an Archbishop shares a sin. There's a Witch Factor involved, so one could assume that a Witch is the one giving these people the factors to become an archbishop. I'm the one who wants to know what he's thinking, don't we all? All the answers you seek lie in the sanctuary, I suppose. Great, now we have to go to the fucking sanctuary to get all our answers, even though Biko knows. And this part's really sad. Roswell's intentions, the meaning of the gospel. Well, I thought I do know the meaning of the gospel. Based on season one, and the dialogues of Better Goose, Sounds like the gospel is like a guide, a manual, some sort of script, some sort of advices that Betrigus follows to help for the day of the ordeal. And he specifically refers to it to see if Natsuki Subaru, potential position of pride, has shown up in the script. But he says, hmm, my gospel has no account of you. Multiple times he makes this reference about some events happening that he didn't you know, foresee happening. Thus, the gospel is somehow supposed to be a guide for that. Beyond that, I'm not too sure. Roswell's intentions, the guide right now, sorry, the, 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 my leading theory for Roswell's intentions is he can use regression similar to Subaru. Maybe it's not regression, but something else, but still he uses Subaru as a tool to like launch just like as like a, like a lab rat, right? Subaru is a lab rat to fuck shit up. Maybe he figures something out. And then Roswell being so cautious, then follows up. If he realizes that this is like a successful run, that's what it seems like right now. And then. Answers about the witch factor? I don't know. A witch gives a, a, a potential candidate of a cult member the witch factor to become an archbishop. And then, that's it. This part is really sad with Biko, man. Biko doesn't want to tell us. Biko has the right to refuse to tell us. When was the last time we heard about a right? Uh, Regulus. <laughs> Regulus saying shit like, This is my right! Freedom of speech! Uh, I, I think that the Regulus conversation is different from the rights that we're talking about. Maybe there's some connections, but the Regulus conversation was like, apparently he has like, like someone greedy would have a lot of materialistic desires, a lot of like fancy clothes, money, women, blah, blah, blah. He does have a lot of women, but apparently like he now can't fulfill the void in his heart. Therefore, he's decided to become like a Buddha and like limit the amount of things that he owns that the rights are something like that. I don't know. I'd have to go back to the annual video to understand his behavior there. Uh, this part is sad. Biko gets so upset. Lil B, which is Biko and then sorry, Beatrice. When we say Beatrice by her full name, you know that we feel apologetic and we're like, no, I didn't mean it like that. I am not a tool here for your convenience. I've never seen Biko as a tool, but Subaru interactions with Biko, it might seem like that, right? Every time we go there, we ask her, we get answers. For sure, when we made a contract with her, she protected us, and it felt like we really bonded there, but this is not that run, and... I feel like we fucked up with Biko here, but hey, hopefully we can make up with this real lolly. Sad. Oto, always the punching bag. And yeah, Biko also stated that she's never cried. Well, at least she has cried, but like it's been a long time since she's cried. And now, apparently, she's close to crying because of the loss of juice, man. Oh. Uh, this side, apparently Amelia was glazing Subaru. Otto and Otto Nikki, aka break time of ReZero, is envious that Amelia's glazing Subaru like that. We don't know exactly the details of what she said. Uh, and then at this point, it's just all about, like, getting more introductions to the Sanctuary, right? And... Right. Sanctuary of Clamaldi and how to enter it. These are all stuff that Roswell told her to do, I'm pretty sure. Rem, we're leaving now. Rem is staying behind in the mansion. Petra is now a maid. Petra, again, the pecking order. <laughs> She's right behind Patrash, I think. Petra is very confident. We've seen the break time, right? Rezero break time, Petra. She's extremely lustful for Subaru. She's extremely prideful of her own looks, too. She's like, I know I'm cute. You don't have to tell me. She steamrolled Otto. You need to treat me like an adult. I do not want to treat you like an adult. You're a 12-year-old. Go away, Petra. 
We try to look at Biko here, but Biko will no longer show herself to us. She's gotten too mad. She can intentionally, you know, like Subaru finding Biko for sure is when Biko like isn't trying to be hidden, but now she's just, she's locked herself in, man. Sad. And then we tell Petra to like kind of look over Biko. I wonder if Petra and Biko will have some sort of friendship, but I fail to see what an ancient being like Biko will have common with this lolly other than both looking like a lolly. Now the day of the departure is upon us. We're leaving. We're leaving. This is interesting. This crystal thing is like necessary to cross the barriers, right? And Frederica also mentions four separate things. You now don't know the location of the sanctuary. You ha and, the and you have the qualification. I don't know what the qualification is. Maybe the qualification is one that holds this necklace. I don't know. To cross the barrier. And then it's all about the resolve and a strong will, which suggests that there's some sort of challenges we need to overcome. Frederica mentions the name Garfield. Garfield was also mentioned by Ram as someone that she can trust in season one in the cut content. Garfield is also someone that Roswell doesn't apparently get along with. Garfield is someone that's going to be very dangerous to look out for. So, all right, let's be careful of Garfield. Is he going to be a cat? He has to be a cat, right? Garfield, Garfield, orange cat, lasagna. Surely it has to be a reference. And remember, look out for Garfield. All right, this is not a duel. Usually when you throw a white handkerchief at somebody's face, right? <laughs> that's like a duel, but this is different. What was specifically this? This is like a good luck charm. It's an old custom performed as a prayer for safe travels. You gotta return it, right? You you have the white cloth, and after the journey, it's gonna get dirty, right? Then you bring it back. And it's like a good luck charm, some sort of tradition, a prayer, safe travels. Thanks, Petra. We'll return it. We put it on our wrist. And Petra also has her own. She goes behind Frederica. Very cute, very cute. This sudden rebellious face is making me sad. I don't think this is like a rebellious thing of more like she got too like self- she, she became a little bit too aware of the action she was doing, right? And maybe embarrassed herself and got behind this, my interpretation at this point. And here we go. Hope you have a good journey. This is her, you know, stained cloth as well. The white cloth right now. Goodbye, Subaru. And the letter. Boom. The letter here. This is why Frederica was lying when she said that, oh, I just have to come to the mansion to take care of shit. Well, that's probably true. It's a half-truth, but she didn't tell the entire truth. Of course she's taking her of the mansion. But Roswell sent her with this letter telling what to do, right? So, again, more data to suggest Roswell knows exactly what he's doing. He's a master puppeteer here. Everything is intentional. Everything he does in season two and season, sorry, arc two and arc three, all of him being AFK, these are intentional things. Trust the process. He's a big brain. This part's really weird. Well, before we get to that part, Puck is gone now. Why? Is Roswell the master though? <laughs> I'm willing to entertain random conspiracy theories, but don't you think it's a little bit unreasonable for a maid who served Roswell for 10 plus years, <laughs> someone that also is at the sanctuary right now, a letter and she says master like, who do you think Master is? Petra? Regulus? Everything suggests at the Master being Roswell. So, <laughs> I don't think there's anything too deep there. Puck is gone. Puck is gone right now. Why? I don't know. Puck told Subaru, Hey, look after uh, Amelia, right? We know that Puck made an oath with Echidna from Frozen Bond. And we know that if Puck abuses the interference too much, then he loses his memories. So is this basically Puck... It's like, think of it like this. There's like a meter. There's a bar of how much interference uh, Puck can have with Amelia's life before bad things happen. Right? So is the meter too full right now? And therefore Puck hid? I'm not sure. Or there's something about the sanctuary that Puck can't get involved with. We know that Puck made an oath with Echidna, and Echidna is at the Sanctuary. I think that's the Sanctuary at the end of the episode. So maybe that's why? I'm not really sure. 
Puck is gone right now. Sometimes he doesn't even show for a couple of days. Why does he refuse to come out? Who knows? But maybe it's like his, again, the oath. What's the word? The bar, right? The interference excessively thing being too built up or something about Echidna's presence in the sanctuary. Or he just straight up wants to be a deadbeat on a super handle everything. It's a learning experience. Lesser spirits too? I, if it's not Ia, I do not care. Emilia, you're so manly. Oh my god. And here, this scene is fucking stupid. Bro. This scene is so fucking stupid. <laughs> Look at this. When it's glowing, I'm assuming we're about to cross the barrier. But Subaru thinks that it's a bomb about to go off. And he takes the necklace off and she passes out. <laughs> and then he goes by himself. <laughs> and for the plot, right? For the plot, I'm glad that he did that to me to kidnap. But like, damn, bro. What the fuck did you just do, dumbass? What are you fucking doing, dude? And now we're just like, we meet this pink girl. She was described to be a doll, according to Annie News. A doll-like thing is apparently what Subaru thought. Because of its cooted like appearance, I'm gonna assume that it's a fucking puppet then with the soul implanted on it. It's got a pointy ear, it's like an elf too. Is this an elf? Maybe? A doll elf? Who knows? Those ears, are you an elf? Runs away and then leads us to these ruins. Is this the sanctuary? Are we already in the sanctuary? I don't know, man. But when we go in there, Echidna. Voice. The same voice from Frozen Bond, right? The same voice like Frozen Bond talks. And this is the person that Puck made an oath with, right? She immediately identifies that Emilia is the root of Subaru's desires. Or at least that's what it seems like, right? If we think about the driving factor, it's all about Emilia. So Kidna knows of Emilia then based on this dialogue. And she entertains Subaru and brings him in. We are in the Windows XP realm, domain expansion. Echidna is there waiting for us at the tea party. Witch of Greed confirmed. And in the trailer, there was a bunch of bodies that were on the ground, just absolutely butchered on both left and right side. Just corpses bleeding out. Everybody dead. Roswell dead. Everybody we know just all fucking dead leading up to Echidna. Wonder what the purpose of that imagery is, but that's pretty much it for this one. I'll see you next time.